Indian Space Agency, ISRO, is now world-renowned. And how India performed successful missions to orbit the Moon and Mars is well-documented. But how did ISRO come into being? What were ISRO's nascent years like? Our correspondent Siddharth MP brings us a report straight from the birthplace of ISRO. Take a look. There's scenic beauty all around, pristine beaches, coconut groves and the perfect tropical weather. The place is known as Thumba. It's a small fishing hamlet in Kerala's capital city of Thiruvananthapuram. In the early 1960s, the father of India's space program, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, had selected Thumba for its ideal geographical location. You know, Dr. Sarabhai came to the southernmost uh, tip of India because this is the place, you know, the magnetic equator is passing through that. But that time, uh, there, was, there were no facilities. But then he came and then he had uh, discussions with the local people. And you know the history, it all started in a church here. And the, you know, when we started, it was all rudimentary facilities only were there. So they had the uh, issue of the making facilities and developing technologies. So it was, uh, you know, you have, would have seen uh, rocket nozzles carried in bicycles or in the bullock carts. So that was the humble beginning. Scientists wanted to launch small rockets from Thumba to the upper atmosphere and perform science experiments known as sounding rockets. These were very small launch vehicles, barely a few meters in length and weighed less than a hundred kilograms. You know the first uh, sounding rocket from Turles was launched in 1963. It was an American uh, uh, rocket but the payload was from France. And then subsequently there were many launches and then Turles uh, was dedicated to the United Nations. Just two years after the American origin rocket was launched from Turles, Indian scientists also started building and launching indigenous rockets. Rohini 75 was India's first indigenous rocket. It measured barely three feet in length. In 1968, the Turles facility was dedicated to the United Nations by the then Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. This opened up the facility for scientists from various spacefaring nations. Thumba became a hub of rocket launching and research activity, despite it being the Cold War era. The Thumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station is one of the most sought-after places in the world to launch sounding rockets from. Throughout the 1960s and thereafter, scientists from more than six nations used to come here and launch rockets. Scientists from the US, Soviet Union, France, Germany, uh, all of these people used to come here despite their differences and the political differences of that time and then launch rockets. The St. Mary Magdalene Church is the most important building in ISRO's history. Inside the premises, young Indian scientists including Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who later became the President of India, and dozens of veterans of the Indian space program worked tirelessly to take India ahead in rocketry. It was all by trial and error. It was along this coastline that Indian scientists had once carried rocket paths on bicycles and bullock carts. The St. Mary Magdalene Church in Tumba is ISRO's first office and ISRO's first laboratory. It is under this facility that a handful of scientists under the legendary leadership of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai conceived some of the most exciting projects during the nascent stage of rocketry in India. From here, the foundation stone of ISRO was laid and that is what led to the agency and what it is today. Two, one, zero, plus one. During the early 1960s, ISRO was known as INCOSPAR, Indian National Committee for Space Research. That's how the Indian space program started. As a formal space agency, ISRO was established on 15th of August 1969. In more than five decades of its existence, ISRO has established itself as one of the leading space agencies in the world. From launching foreign origin rockets from its humble facility in Turles, ISRO has advanced by leaps and bounds. In addition to launching India's own missions, ISRO also earns revenue from commercial launches. From Indian soil, ISRO has launched more than 380 satellites belonging to dozens of nations, 
all using India's end-to-end -end space technology. From launching experimental rockets of foreign origin from a sleepy fishing hamlet to be able to reach the red planet and also the lunar orbit using India's own indigenous rockets and satellites, Indian space agency ISRO has come a long way over the last six decades. We have to keep in mind that after Moon and Mars, the Indian space agency now is gunning for sending Indian astronauts to space and bringing them back safely. We have to remember that this journey, a very ambitious and stellar journey of space flight, had its humble beginnings here at Tumba. With video journalist Surendra, Siddharth MP, Vyond, World is One.